thank you for inviting me. Um, uh, I am the chair of the Columbia Math Department. It's it's really terrible. <laughs> so, how did that happen, right? <laughs> okay, but um, uh, and that happened in the summer, and uh, then Elan came over, uh, and uh, then she forced me to stop doing my chair stuff. <laughs> so that was great. So I'll, read, I'll I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we. Uh, what we wrote up last um, semester, um, but I'll, I'll say some things that um, are not in the paper, and uh, you know you should look at the paper for uh, more definite assertions, right? And I'll, I'll just say some. Uh, I'll just throw caution into the wind, and I'll just say some things, and then if you want to check it out, you'll have to look at the paper. Okay, I hope that's all right. Um, so let's start. So, um, so there's this long and very interesting paper by Reno and Grusson where they do many things about quasicurian sheets and flatness and so on. And one of the things they uh, invented there is a, cer a certain kind of purity, which is rather different from purity for etal cohomology. Okay, it's, I'll tell you what it is. Or well, I mean, okay, so section one is maybe it's more integrality or some kind of purity. Um, <clears throat> right now, Bruce. So uh, what is it? And I'm only going to say this in one case, and it's a super general thing, right? This paper, it's, it's, it's very, very general. But let's say you have um, some finite type um, yeah, um, over Z, an affine scheme, okay? But it can, of course, be a lot more general than um, there's this definition in this paper, right? Um, of, uh, of M is universally pure over Z. Okay, if something happens, and that, uh, and it's all okay. So you can look in the paper to find a precise definition. And in the case where your affine and finite type over Z, it's equivalent to, and it's all, it's very close to the definition. But there are some intermediate lemmas. Okay, it's the following for every P. Okay, for every irreducible um, or embedded component um, <clears throat> let me try to uh, use the board z so I think of um, such a thing as an integral closed subscheme right of um, and then the scheme will be you take this the z and you um, go to the strict hensonization of the localization of the integers at p, right? And then you take an embedded or irreducible component of it, then, so for all of this, a closed fiber of um, C to spec. So this is like a, a scheme over one dimensional base, right? And you want the closed fiber to be non empty. Okay, that's a word. That's kind of a mouthful, right? But um, so the thing, the thing this is saying is that you don't have, you know, you, you don't have sort of this kind of thing where all of a sudden you are missing some fiber, right? Okay, and this is saying it sort of as in a strong possible way, and their motivation was, to, like for example. If this holds and M is also flat over Z, then M is the spectrum of a ring, which is uh, projective as a Z module, but not finitely generated, of course, right? And it's a much more general theorem, this the thing that I just said, not just over Z, but over arbitrary rings and so on. That's what their paper is about, right? Okay, but we could also consider this condition just for, for fun, for, for 
you know, uh, and um, just talking to a land and something that I, I'll say in a minute, like made me think of this condition. And you can show that this is equivalent to, so you have to think a little bit for every number field K, um, right? M cross over spec Z, spec of OK, uh, spec of some ring. So this ring will then be a mod, you know, an, a, an algebra over the ring of integers of, of K, right? Then uh, not exists <laughs> an F and A non torsion and a prime in OK such that F is infinitely. Divisible. Okay, it's a non zero prime. Okay, so the idea is that um, <clears throat> you could have some, you can have some torsion in these rings because I don't say flat, right? But I'm saying that if you have a non torsion element, you can't keep dividing it by a prime, right? That, and I thought this was interesting because. Um, this is some kind of a geometric condition, which may be hard to check if M is a Marlite space or something, but maybe you have access to the ring of this Marlite space, and maybe you can, by some algebraic method, to show you don't have elements that are arbitrarily divisible by perhaps, right? So, uh, and I wanted to tell you about this. And a, an interesting fact about this notion, so what would be a consequence of having this condition? So a fact, Uh, a fact is that if M is universally pure, um, yeah, okay, over Z, then every you can say more, you can say more, but then every area is spoken upon it. Z and F has an integral point. Okay, and so what's well, an integral point, right? In, I mean a morphism from spec OK into this, this component, you know, where you know, K is a number. Okay, yeah. And this is what like one of these things. Uh, about existence of integral points, if you have like, um, um, you know, there are these theorems that say that sometimes you can make integral points by, uh, Murabi has a paper about this, for example, right? I forget what the, uh, I forget what the, uh, there's some term, some other names that come up, which I, I have now forgotten, I apologize. Okay, so, uh, but this is sort of, this you can get much more easily. You don't need this precise condition. It's just, yeah. Okay, great. Questions? Yeah. So if M is a spectrum of FP, say, then is that universally put? Oh, shit. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Dominate. Uh, 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 this, this component has to dominate. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Dominating. Yeah. Yes, very much. Thank you very much. Dominating specs. Yeah, it could be an error of component just losing. Yeah, so of course you can. This is a perfectly fine pure morphism, right? Yes, but um, if there's a component that, that dominates, then you will find an integral point, okay. a multi section or something. Okay, great. Okay. And, you know, uh, these, uh, Helen is asking these kinds of questions, right? You know, when do you have an integral representation of the fundamental group of a smooth projective variety, for example, right? Okay, and so if you knew something about more life space having this property, then you would get that for free, right? Okay, so let's talk about this, this moduli. Are there any questions about what I, about section one? Why is it called universal? 
it's because there um i think i think it it um it just means that the, the property the, the the correct definition uh is true after any base change yes yes okay no, we don't see it no we don't see it you don't see it here yeah there are, there are many cases in which pureness is automatically uni universal like in the flat case if you're flat and finite type if you're pure you're universally pure for example there are lots of little lemmas okay yeah sorry i'm sorry but um um yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. And um, this this condition about these components, you yeah, is 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 you know, you might want to ask this only for irreducible components, for example. That is already interesting enough in in the case of these Morley spaces. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> so let X be a smooth. Uh, projective variety. Uh, yeah, why not? Over C, right? And gamma will be the, uh, the topological fundamental group of X. And R will be an integer, bigger equal to one, right? And then um, I think I said something wrong in the um, the abstract for the talk. Okay, so it's it's better to look at these more like spaces. So. So look at Hom gamma into GLR, right? And then you can look at M being the GIT quotient by the conjugation action. And these are both finite type, uh, you know, affine over C. Okay. So this is spec of some ring, and then this is just spec of the invariant ring. Okay, and this is the conjugation. Okay, okay, and then you, I then you can just ask the question, right? Um, and I don't want to make, do not, I will not allow any of you to call this a conjecture by me. Okay, <laughs> it's just a question. <laughs> Um, because my rule is that if you make a conjecture and it's wrong, you get punished. Yes. <laughs> and let me not say how exactly how you get punished. Some Dutch style. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, so this is just about gamma. So why do you need a projected smooth? Oh yeah, because well, the, right. Uh, very good question. I think you don't fully need, uh, but I want to be even careful when I'm correlating the question. <laughs> I think it's okay to just uh, any any smooth variety, say, made or normal. Okay, you can make this question, and I think well, you, you can make it for a finitely presented group. Yes, okay, but then it's wrong. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yes, right. Okay, so is M universally pure? Over Z question mark and is M box universally pure over Z. And I think they're almost equivalent, but I didn't like I didn't prove it. Okay. I think one implication is pretty clear and the other one, because right, it's something about existence of elements. So if the ring of this one is a sub of the ring of that one, then you get some obvious, right? Thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. Um <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. So, so this. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. So this is this is wrong. For um, gamma, just any finitely presented uh, uh, abstract group, right? And I'm sorry, I forget the. I could look at the paper and tell you the name of the person who made a kind of example. Okay, it's in the paper, so you can find it in the paper. Yeah. Okay. What is the paper? <laughs> <laughs> it's a unique archive preprint that is written by Helene No and myself. Is that is that okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that that <laughs> unless somebody yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. 
Great. Um, cool. So, uh, so we have some weak evidence. Uh, okay, the first thing is that I don't know if this is properly evidence, but Simpson has this has a conjecture. Um, uh, okay. Uh, he conjectures that uh, all isolated um, <clears throat> C points. Okay, um, are. So um, it's saying that rigid representations of gamma are, and I think the conjecture is strong, right? It's like saying that they're motivic. And so integral. And then uh, look, so I don't know if that's evidence, okay? But uh, then him, uh, Elan, uh, together with versioning, Um, you know, they proved this for proved A, the integrality, okay, for um, what are called logically rigid graphs. Okay, but um, what's in the paper, uh, one of what's in the paper uh, that we did together, so. Um, it's that, um, for example, the following statement, right? It's in particular, right? This would say that um, if the Q fiber is not empty, right? Then it should be dominant, right? Oh God, but you always have the trivial representation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Yes. Oh my God, okay. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. So how do I say this? Well, I'll say it anyway, and it will be an empty statement. Okay, so if, ah, okay. If MC is not empty, right, then M should be subjective on the spec Z. Okay, and you can, um, okay. So, uh, but let me say it this way, okay. And same holds for, for uh, M replaced by closure of, of locus irreducible guys. For example, okay. And then, um, right, that's, it's supposed to be true, right? That if, if you have a character, if in this kind of purity thing, then if you have a generic point, you should have a point in every closed fiber, right? Okay, and then another thing, there's a more precise statement in the paper, okay? And then another thing we prove is that if the dimension of the irreducible locus or complex representations is bigger than zero, then um, all fibers of and irreducible C bar to spec C have dimension bigger than zero. Okay, and and um, yeah, and this is not literally stated like this in the paper, but I wanted to I just wanted to give you an idea, right? So I'm saying that in this, I'm saying that if if the generic fiber is at least one dimensional, then everywhere you'll have at least a one dimensional fiber, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I really wanted to tell, besides Helene, I wanted to tell some other people about thinking about it this way. And um, that's why I ended up stating it this way. And um, I think I'm not going to state the precise form of the theorem in the paper. Okay, I hope you get an idea. And I hope, I hope, I hope it makes you look at the paper. Is there some, if the fibers have dimension at least? No, we can't prove that. You think it should be true? Yes. I think it should be true, <laughs> but I but that but it's just a guess. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but you have to be careful, right? So obviously, suppose there is a unique, um, suppose there are finally many representations or something. Those representations will, of course, become reducible, right? So you really, uh, when you specialize to some mod L representation, right? So you really need to do this for the whole thing, not just the locus of irreducible guys. Okay, so when you're formulating it this way, right, in, in terms of this, Universal purity, you really need to take the, the whole thing. Yeah? Okay, and that was what was wrong in the abstract. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. And now um, let me tell you uh, what goes into proving things like this, right? Uh, so, how, how did we do this? And, but then I'm going to instead prove a different. Thing, or I'm going to reprove somebody else's theorem with the same method, but I'll tell you what the method is. Okay, so so ideas in the proof. Okay, so um, yeah, so you you try to specialize. Um, from x to uh, an x zero over some finite field. So you, you'll have some specialization between fundamental groups and you'll pick it so that some, you have, you're assuming the existence of some representations, right, in x zero, and you're gonna make those uh, end up coming by the specially assumed map from a, a representation of, of this x zero over fq bar. Okay, and then I'm going to use an idea of Drenfeld. Um, so, to uh, okay. But if you burn it, if you... yeah, yeah, yeah. So to get some some rep of phi one of x zero over f q bar. That, that's first. But then this will have some finite image or something, and so it will actually be definable over a finite field. And then you use an ideal of Trimfeld to, um, I'll, I'll explain later, uh, to get arithmetic. Reps, L-adic. Um, reps uh, of, you know. Pi on the zero. So over the finite field, maybe you have to extend the finite field a little bit. Okay, this uses a trick of um, that's related to one of my old paper about projections on, on fundamental groups of, of varieties over finite fields. And then um, and then you're going to use then. So how do we get this surjectivity? For example, then we're going to get an L adic system, and then we can switch um, from L to L prime. So then, then we use so lots of lots of names um, to switch L to L prime. Okay. Um, so you have a you know you have a irreducible arithmetic allied representation, and then uh, you know you can you can make an L prime a companion companions right. Right, and then you lift those back to characteristic zero and you get the, like, um, you, you know, you'll get a ZL prime bar point of your Molly space. Yeah. Okay. But you need some smoothness for X zero. For X zero? Yes. Um, so right now, uh, yes. So I think we, when we actually perform this, we, like Nick said, um, uh, I, I don't think we assume projective, but we assume smooth. Yeah. And then we, you know, you can, yeah. So we, we use smoothness. Oh, so you, you don't want to any characteristic in Hadux, just some group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for, 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 you know, suitable Q. Oh, okay. Some, some, yeah, that's the point. Some, thank you very much. Some suitable large Q that you're going to pick. 
And then you have for this Q, you have this L addict thing, and then you can switch to L prime because you only, you care about making the L prime versions given that there is an L version. Yeah. Okay. So it's um, it's kind of yeah. It, it proves something, but it doesn't prove what we want because, like Nick was saying, right? We really would like to say that if you if you have a component of, of dimension five, then you know for every reduction you will have a component of dimension five. But then you have to control how many you're making, and that seems to be difficult. So I don't know how to do it. So, uh, but I think there are some loose ends in this paper that could be improved by by smart people. Okay. So yeah. So this is very 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 rough, but in Instead, I wanted to discuss a little bit more in detail. Um, um, so, any questions about this? This is. I'm sorry, it's it's very rough. But now I'm going to um, be a little bit more detailed. So, so I'm going to. I want to explain how to reprove a theorem of Monkey Which much is there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all the monkey suits. <laughs> Neither do you, probably. Um, that matter which la forge. Excuse me? Which la forge. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, okay. Yes. <laughs> does it help if you put L? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> okay, great. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the theorem is this, that f be um, a morph sum of normal varieties of the complex numbers. And then I'm gonna say it this way, if, uh, okay, if L, is a so now I don't know why I don't do representations here, so you can just translate into representations. Okay, semi simple um, complex local system um, on you know the analytic space. Uh, then when you pull back L. It's also semi simple. Okay. Right? Um, so that's a theorem. And um, so let's see if we can um, use all of these amazing theorems we have in arithmetic algebraic geometry to prove this. Okay, so we're not gonna, it's not gonna be cheap, but let's give it another proof of it. Okay, yeah, by the way, there's a very interesting question that, um, you know, it's a very interesting question that uh, if you, what if you uh, have a triangle? You have a smooth projective variety and you have a triangle in it, like a bunch of P1s that form a triangle, and you have a semi, you know, irreducible local system, then what happens when you restrict to this, this triangle? And there's some papers on this, but I think we don't know the full the full story. Okay. So I yeah. Um what can you explain? Well, maybe maybe the maybe the loop should have finite order. You tell me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So this is this is not addressing this because 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 why is not? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it's a. I think it's a good question. Yeah. Um, I tried to think about it and I didn't get anywhere. 
So. Okay, so um, there's some reduction. So proof, it's proof sketch. Okay, this is going to be many, a bunch of boards, right? So uh, first you reduce to x and y smooth. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to say about it. Okay, so um, but you that, that's why you use normal. So it's something like if you have a resolution of a normal thing, then pi one uh, top top goes subjectively. It's something some something simple like that. Okay, so let's assume we did this. You restrict the smooth locus. You can restrict to the smooth locus, and then a pi one is subjective. But then you have to worry that uh, the image of this isn't in the smooth locus of X. Yeah. Okay. So you have to you you, you have to work around that. But you can make a diagram, right? That you can you, you can make a diagram where now it does get okay. resolutions vertically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now let's fix some. Some images like this, um, and then um, let's look at. Um, now these world twilight spaces are now going to be different from the ones before. Okay, so there's going to be a forgetful map. Uh, so this will be the modelized space of irreducible. So let's do only irreducible row from pi one of x top uh, to GLV. Um, you know, where uh, the dimension of V is R, so representations of, of dimension R together with um, a subspace V, dimension of V prime, it's R prime, right? Such that of, yeah, such that V prime is stable under. Pi one of top, I guess, of y. So right, so we have pi one of y mapping to pi one of x, right? And then we have a representation for pi one of x, and then of course, there's an induced representation. You have a subspace. Okay, and these are the ones where moduli of now v rho v prime and a splitting, a splitting. Of p prime to v. Okay. All right. And now these will be um, these will uh, give us finite type schemes over z. Uh, and I think they're separated. <laughs> okay. And uh, separate finite type schemes over Z, but maybe it's really, it's really okay. It just means oh, sorry, a pi one very good pi one y top x invariant. So the image, yeah. Thanks for asking. So the image of this, right, are exactly the ones, the ones where it's not giving us a epithet. We want to prove, right, that it's semi-simple. So we want to prove that the restriction to pi one y is uh, doesn't have a, a subspace you can't split off. So if you're not in the image, then you have a, then you have a kind of example. So if this is not surjective, you have a kind of example. I'm sorry, but this is all still over Z, right? So if over Q, this is not surjective, you have a kind of example to the theorem, if and only if, right? These are the modelized spaces, uh, you know, over Z, right? So V could be a vector space <laughs> over any field or over a ring, right? Locally free mod over ring. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So let me, what I just said, let me write it down. 
Um, right? Let W in M be the complement of, sorry about this, of the image of forget. Sorry? Yeah, no, so these are, these moralized spaces, I can define them like this, right? As finite type moralized spaces are over the integers, right? Okay, so I'll make I'll make the connection with this now, right? But the image is only constructible. Constructible, yes, it's a construct. So the image is constructible. So this is a constructible set. You're 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 writing the paper for me. Okay, <laughs> constructible set. Thank you. Yes, very good. Yeah. So, but of course, constructible is 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 mighty fine, as my student Max would say. Um, so, okay. Right, so um, so we we will derive a contradiction from you know W um, Q is not empty. Okay, so you get right. So if if this is not empty, right, then um, we have a complex point in there because it's a constructible set, right? So I have a complex point. The complex point will be an irreducible guy which has a thing that doesn't split off. So it would be a contradiction to this. And, and anytime you have a contradiction to this theorem, you will be able to make such a such a R and R prime, blah, 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 right? Yeah? Okay. So this is, yeah. So this is our goal, right? To get a contradiction, assuming this is not empty. Okay. <clears throat> Unfortunately, now the notation is really going to explode. Um, it's a, <clears throat> a little bit complicated. So, if so, choose. So we have to pick a nice um, sub. There's that. So first of all, I want W prime uh, to be locally closed. Control sub scheme of M. Yeah. I can't say of W, W isn't a scheme, right? It's a constructible subset, right? So. So, you know, a constructible subset has a, a finite filtration by locally closed things, right? And you can make them uh, be irreducible and reduced, right? So, so that's fine. But then I want more, okay? I want the dimension to be maximal, at least over Q. Right? So an integral in particular means not empty, right? Irreducible things are not empty. Okay, W prime intersect. Then I want, if you take it away and you close it up and you look at the intersection, you get empty. And I want, this you can always do by shrinking W prime a little bit. And then uh, I want W prime to be smooth over Z. And that's always gonna be true on an open, so you can just shrink it again to make it open. Okay. Okay, so you have to check that you can do this, right? Um, Right, so um, yeah, I could try to make a picture, right? But <laughs> it's going to be a disaster. So, okay, so then I don't understand this Okay, so just think about it this way. Uh, so decompose W into locally closed things. Yes. And then take the irreducible components of all the pieces and take one of them that has maximal dimension while the generic fiber has maximal dimension. Oh, sorry, you want to have stuff, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Okay, pick one of the irreducible components of maximal dimension 
And in that, pick a small open, that all of this will, will work. Because you're throwing away from the component, you're throwing in stuff of lower dimension. So when you do the closure thing, it won't bother you. And the other components only hit your component in, in finally many closed subsets. So you throw those out too. And then you will get this. You, so you could not have the image to a dense image, for instance. Sorry? You could not have the image M to M to a dense image. Right. So this is a complement of the image. Yes. Yeah. So, right. So they, this could very well have dense image. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, so you pick. So now we're going to pick Z in W prime uh, close point. Um, so that will mean that, so everything is of finite type over the integers. So, so these close points have finite residue fields, right? Um, okay. And then we get, right? Um, I want to back um, the GLR of some, some vector space, right, row Z. We get the corresponding moduli point, right? We get Vz prime inside of Vz, right? right um, this will be dim over kappa z of Vz will be r, right? Dim over of v prime z will be r prime, and, and so on, right? This will be stable under pi one y top. Right now, one of the issues with this, uh, with trying to prove this, is that if you deform an extension, then you can very easily make it semi-simple. But that's not what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, also, right. Um, and by the way, because this point little z is not in the image, you know this inclusion isn't split. But that actually will never be used. <laughs> okay. We won't use that. Um, okay, so um, so notice that um, I'm going to use the following later. If you look at the local ring, right, at Z of this W prime and you complete it, then this is, uh, by the current structure here, right, it's firmly smooth. So, right, W prime is smooth over Z, so it's firmly smooth over the periodic number. So this will be a power series over the width ring, right? Xd for some d bigger equal to zero, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to use that later. Okay. Now we have to specialize to positive characteristic, but not for the representation, but for x, right? So now we're going to choose a spread out. Um, of f from y to x. Okay, so we're going to get um, xs, no, ys for xs over s. Right, so, and um, we're going to have a c point. Sorry. So we have our original situation of the complex numbers, right? And we know by all these beautiful theorems in EGA, right, that we can find some finally generated subring of the complex numbers, take spec of it, and then make a morphism between smooth things here so that the base change gives you this. And um, so my base change, right? And then you can moreover assume that if you had a beautiful or a good compactification of X and Y, and maybe even a map between those, right, you can also assume you have that here and so on and so forth. All of those, all of those great things. Yeah, so this will be a finite type, right? This will be, let's say, F, F fine, finite type over Z, integral maybe. This could be a generic point. You, you can, yeah, okay. All right, this is a standard thing you can do. There's a lot of Hakamoro chalk here. Maybe I should steal for, some for, for my, department that doesn't have any money. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> we're 
okay, don't worry. Um, all right, so. Okay. Okay. So now, um, yeah. Now we're going to choose. This is like what happened before. Um, we choose a close point. That's an S uh, of large characteristic P, right? And then we're going to look at the specialization maps. I, okay, I guess you, yeah, okay. Am I doing this wrong? Okay. We're just gonna uh, brutally look just at the prime to p quotients in um, uh, in characteristic p, right? This right. This point is in characteristic p. We're gonna take the geometric fiber there of this of this uh, family of maps, right? And then we're gonna know that uh, on prime to p quotients, it's a bijective, right? And so. Um, and now this representation over here, right? This is a vector space over a finite field. This is a finite group, right? So this will factor through, through here and it will be prime to P because P was large. So we're gonna get that. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry about all the notation. GLR. V of Z, we're going to have this um, row Z here, right? And we're going to get it to factor through some definite map here, a unique one, right? So this will be called row of Z S bar. Okay. So we get this uniquely, right? And then um, it will still be the case, right, that if you don't mind, let me now write it down. It will still be the case that this V prime Z will be stable under this group in there. And so also under the whole fundamental group, if you let it act through the, you know, through this right, the equation, right? Okay. Is that all right? Okay. <clears throat> and now, um, now let's think about, so now let's look at the completion of M at Z. Okay, so this will be the deformation space um, of V prime Z inside V Z acted on by pi one um, x s bar, you know, and this one being preserved by pi one by s bar. Right, so all I'm saying here is that if you suppose you have an Artinian ring with residue field kappa z, right, and you have a deformation of this whole thing to that, to that Artinian ring, Right then, the, the image of this of this uh, this homomorphism will still have have image prime to uh, or, you know prime to p. But, right, the, this is confusing. The finite residue field of, of z is a different prime than p. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it will come from here, and then it will come from there, and uh, you know, and that's exactly what it would be, mean to have a deformation of this over on this side, and the molar space is the molar space, and so the completion of the molar space of a point is the deformation space of a similar problem where you have pi one top X and pi one top Y. Okay, okay.
But this is cool, right? Because um, now what's going to happen is that we're going to be able to get an, I'm going to try to explain this better. It's going to be the, an action of Gawa Kappa on this for some finite extension. This will be a geometric action from some finite extension Kappa of Kappa FS. Right, so these are the deformations on the geometric fundamental group, and we're going to act on it by the Galois group. Right? Okay. Okay. So let me, and another thing to note is that our W prime, the point C is on the W prime. So if this denotes a formal completion, right, then this is, this is here, right? Okay. And we want to produce. Uh, we want to produce something here, and we're going to use this action. Great. Sorry. Oh my god! Oh my god! Fine. Um, but we're also close. Okay. Great. So uh, the reason for for Gawa Kappa action, right? So again, uh, yeah. So let maybe really briefly, right? This is this has finite image, so uh, that gives you a finite quotient of, of this this by one, and that's just preserved by. So you know there's this okay. Is it faster to write it down or is it faster to to tell you to believe me? <laughs> you can write it down and tell us to believe. I'm sorry. Uh, so defined. And some phi one x kappa. Okay, so this means the base chains of x s two kappa, right? Okay, and then um, you know similarly v prime z stable under phi one by s bar, so stable under phi one by kappa for some kappa. It's, it's because it's all actions on, on sort of on finite sets. And then finally, right, you, you have this like one pi one xs bar going to pi one. And I should have said this first, I'm sorry. Right, so the arithmetic fundamental group of this fiber, right, is sandwiched between the geometric one and the Galois group, right? And that gives you an outer action of the Galois group on this. And so on, I own. Isomorphs and classes of representations of this, and that gives you an action on this deformation space, right? But to, to say that, you have to first make little kappa large enough so the things you're looking at are already defined at the kappa level. Let me put it that way. Okay, and now the key lemma in this whole story is that this action deserves this this thing of your prime hat z. Okay, that's what we want to show, and then we'll be done. <laughs> well, we then we have to use lots and lots of other people's theorems and say that we're done. Okay, so um, right, and so why is this the case? Well, this. This completion, right? It, it, it's this it's this beautiful ring which has a dense set of points with values in like um, this width ring, for example, right? So we just have to see that the set of points with values in this width ring that are inside W prime are preserved by this this Galois action, right? Okay, so I found my slope class. Enough to see 
that the W, the W kappa Z points ah, of this W prime at Z are uh, stable under this action. And this is because, this is true because these are the ones, these are that defos. Okay, I'll go to another board. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're defos, right? Of the initial guy with some property. And remember, W is the complement, right? Defos V prime and V bar. And these are over W kappa Z, right? You know, so, uh, you know, defos of that that initial thing, let me not write that, right? Search that V prime one over, oh god, L and V1 over L does not split. Right, right? Okay, but now you just have to make the point that if you have a representation here and some, some representation that over, well, slightly different group that doesn't split, and if you conjugate, the same thing is true. It doesn't split. Because you can unwind, you can unconjugate, right? Okay. I'm so happy you're nodding, yes. <laughs> so great, now, now we're done. Uh, but unfortunately, now we still, we only have two minutes and we still have to appeal to some people's theorems. So what Drinkfeld observed is that when you maneuver yourself in this situation, you're always gonna have a point fixed by this, this action, which is it lives in characteristic zero. So it's so difficult. So you can find this in this paper where he, he had, there's a unique paper of Dunfeld that I think has my name in the title or Kashubar. It has Kashubar in the title. Yes. But there may be multiple papers of Dunfeld with Kashubar in the title. Okay. Um, so he proves. Kashiwara's conjecture, uh, conjecture using my conjecture. And then Gates' career pro uh, proves my conjecture. So, um, okay, so Dinkeld has this argument that says there exists um, a fixed point uh, of action on this formally smooth thing. Okay, which is in characteristic zero. That's the important thing. Okay, and what this means is this, what this gives us is an arithmetic uh, representation um, pi on x kappa, GLR, and let me just write ZL bar, right? So it will actually, this fixed point will live over a finite extension of the bit ring of kappa Z and so on. Okay, so you can, I believe, I can give you the reference exactly. Okay. And then, um, okay, but it's still a point of this W prime. So it still has the property that when you pull it back to Y, right? So such that, um, you know, uh, ZL bar R prime in this, right? This is, this is pi one by kappa stable and does not split. Because it's not in the image of the map from the split guys to the thing. But this is impossible because um, also this, this, the, um, since the modelized space was made the way we did it, it's actually irreducible when you invert L. 
you have an irreducible arithmetic local system, it should have some, some pure weight. And so then when you pull it back to Y, it will still have a pure weight and it can't have a thing that doesn't split off by theorems of people in the room. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Okay, two minutes over. Thank you very much. Why in the end did you say it was irreducible, this representation? Because the moduli space wasn't the same as before, and not, this time I took my moduli space to parameterize irreducible guys. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm sorry. So this M and this M, uh, like uh, somewhere written there, like th th that was only irreducible. Yeah, but in this proof, not in the first part of the talk. So I switched notation in the middle of the talk. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the irreducible locus is a nice open in the other one. But for this purity thing, you cannot just only look at the irreducible guys. Yeah. So what's the original proof of Mochi Suchi? What did he? Uh, uh oh, harmonic maps, I think. Arch theory. So I didn't read it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it could be an easier proof, you know, you know, I, can you compare that? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but now we can do it too. <laughs> Let's go have some drinks. No questions, let's uh, keep the